Hi, it's The Wire, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's ask a foundational question because we understand high volatility athletes. Right? The guy who can start an Olympics slow, can not do well, even from three, the first few games of the tournament, and then can explode the last two and net the U.S. the gold medal. Right? Steph Curry. Right? LeBron very much deserved that Olympic MVP. He was there every night. Steph Curry was there the last two nights. But you understand, when a Steph Curry gets hot, there are few things that can stop him. You know, the same applies to Daniel Dubois. He's a high volatility athlete. In other words, there's some nights you look at Dubois, he's looking sluggish against Joe Joyce. You're thinking, wow, when is Dubois going to figure out a way not to get hit by Joyce's jab? And the answer was never. In fact, let's change the answer. The answer was at the end of the fight by taking a knee. Right? You're looking at Dubois against Usyk and Dubois looks sluggish. You're wondering if Dubois realizes that he hits harder than Usyk. Um, you know, then of course Dubois gets the knockdown. They wave it off. The fight continues and Dubois goes back to looking dazed and confused. Right now, that guy can get beaten by a lot of heavyweights. But the Dubois who shows up against the guy I still think is the heir apparent. Philippe Ergovic. And he is throwing punches from start to finish. There's never a moment in that fight where you thought, wow, Dubois is tiring. No, he's in his mid-twenties. He's ready. He's taking right hands. He's not discouraged in the slightest. This is his opportunity. This is his night. Now that Dubois, is there anyone in the heavyweight division who should be going off at a minus 500 against that version of Daniel Dubois? Folks, the answer is no. Right? Dubois is high volatility. He's high variance. There are going to be some nights where you look at him and like Steph Curry in the championship game against France, you're thinking to yourself, he's hot. There is no one on the court who can stop him at this moment. Right? That's Daniel Dubois. Two-handed power. I can't even, if I'm an opponent, fixate on his right hand and think to myself, hey, I'm not going to get hit with this because then that left hand might come in and end my night. Right? Dubois' hand speed mixed with big power Understand, he can throw the punches on a loop. He's prepared to trade with you. This is Dubois at his best. He's prepared to trade with you. He thinks he can move his head at the last minute to roll with the punch. He's willing to take that chance. This is also a version of Dubois that can show up at any moment. So you're watching the Kevin Lorena fight. Kevin Lorena is punching out Daniel Dubois in the first round. Knocks him down. Is in his face. Dubois looks like he doesn't know what to do. Then, of course, we get to the second round and a different fighter leaves Dubois' corner. Right? Lorena is stopped early. So let me just say, there's a casino mispricing right now. Joshua, a, a guy who's had bad nights, right? A guy who never figured out during the entire first fight what to do with Andy Ruiz. A fighter he knew going into the fight had been beaten by Joseph Parker using foot speed, using a back foot. Right, Joshua got hit, Joshua got dropped. Let's just say Joshua panicked. 
before that, the Vladimir Klitschko fight, right? That fight is one of Joshua's biggest moments, right? People forget that Joshua drops Klitschko. That's the sequence. He drops Klitschko. Klitschko gets off the canvas. Round later, drops Joshua. Joshua gets off the canvas. Folks, Joshua's finished. There is no possibility for at least the next two rounds of Joshua coming close to dropping Klitschko. Another heavyweight champ is in Klitschko's corner. Vitaly Klitschko. They're talking. It's clear the brothers thought that Joshua's muscles were going to slow down his ability to recover. It's clear that Vladimir Klitschko, who had sparred with Joshua, thought that Joshua was in over his head. It took Joshua some time to recover, didn't it? Right, so folks, there's no chance that if these guys, Joshua and Dubois, fought six times, Joshua would win five of the six. But yet he's priced as a minus 500. Now, as I've told my premium subscribers here before, they've had a head start on this. Um, Dubois is mispriced here. You're getting Dubois at a plus 375. So we're going to be incremental on this fight. What I've done, I'm just telling you what I'm doing. You think for yourself. What I've done is I've bet on Dubois. Right, I've gotten the plus 375 on Daniel Dubois because that's a casino mispricing. Because the first thing you do in betting on boxing is you look at what's mispriced and you grab it. Right, Dubois came out against Ergovic, got hit hard with power shots in the first round. His reaction was to trade. Now I agree, there is a possibility, and it's a distinct possibility, that trying to trade with Anthony Joshua is the, one of the biggest mistakes a fighter can make. I would argue that because Joshua is cautious and reactive, right, you want to almost lull him to sleep while you're winning rounds. You don't want to wake up the giant by attacking him. If you know you can land a right hand or a left hook, you want to wait until you have an exit strategy. You don't want to engage him before throwing the power shots. But we understand that's not Dubois' game. Patience isn't in Dubois' vocabulary. He's going to come out, and he understands he's gifted offensively. He has hand speed. He has power in both hands. I believe he's going to come out, and he's going to start throwing punches. I know there are gamblers out there who are thinking, look, if Joshua lands like Ergovic landed, there's no way that Dubois stays upright. What I want people to do is to go back and look at that Ergovic fight. I personally feel Ergovic could have won that fight easily by understanding that he had an educated back foot and by moving away out of the pocket. I believe Ergovic landed so many right hands that he thought he was a puncher two away from knocking out Daniel Dubois. Right? Well, Ergovic's mistake. He lost that fight. But I need for people to remember the punishment that Ergovic took from Daniel Dubois, right? Ergovic's face is pulverized. That fight ends on cuts, and it's a fight that Ergovic is winning at the time it stopped. Both, not one, both of Ergovic's eyes are busted up. Now, Joshua, to me, is not defensively blessed, right? He's the guy who wants to enter the pocket when he's ready to throw punches. He's not the guy, one man's opinion, 
correct me in the comment section of this YouTube video. He's not the guy who can be in the pocket. Think Foreman. Right? Foreman could be in the pocket blocking shots and could stay in the pocket while he throws hooks to your body and power shots up top. Right? He's not that guy. So given the fact that we've seen Joshua hit hard in some fights, given the fact that Daniel Dubois is offensively blessed, how can anyone give Dubois less than a 40% chance of winning this fight? Right? Ignoring the fact that Joshua is a minus 500, understand, on the Dubois side of the ledger when you factor into VIG, he's a plus 375. That's 3.75 to 1. They're telling you that Joshua wins more than three times. For every time if they fought a series, Dubois would win. I'm not buying it. Right? I'm not buying it. Let's also go over Joshua's last two fights. And I know Joshua's fought a lot of people in his career. Right? We concede that. I he fought Joe Parker already. Right? He fought Carlos Tackham, who is KG. Right? Of course, you heard me mention Andy Ruiz. You heard me mention Vladimir Klitschko. Add to that Alexander Povetkin, Billy and White, uh, Kubrat Pulev. Joshua certainly has fought his share. But not recently. Right? How much time did Robert Hellenius have to prepare for the Anthony Joshua fight? Just ask yourself that question. Um, Otto Wallen is tough, right? Wallen, of course, gave Tyson Fury a tough fight, cut Fury, beat Gassiev, right? Wallen's tough. He doesn't punch like Daniel Dubois, right? Joshua's last two fights, folks. Just looking at it after taking a step back, have been against Otto Wallen. In fact, his last three fights, right? You have Robert Hellenius, Otto Wallen, and a guy in his second pro fight, Francis Ngannou. I know we're praising Ngannou for his performance against Tyson Fury, right? But let's remember Ngannou was new to boxing. Nganu didn't know how to make an adjustment to Joshua's right hand. Right? Now, with those three opponents, not exactly Zhili Zhang, Martin Bacoli, uh, Deontay Wilder, right? Not exactly a list of fighters who, you know, are big, rough, tumble. You understand they have the punch that could end the fight at any moment. Right, folks, Joshua hasn't gotten here by fighting those guys recently. He's gotten here by fighting the three guys I've mentioned. Right, Joshua's in his 30s. Joshua and Eddie Hearn have figured out a way to take a fighter in the news like Francis Ngannou, build up the fight, make a mint without Joshua really getting tested. Right? They figured out a way where a fight scheduled, the fighter withdraws, Robert Hellenius has just had a fight. They were able to put Hellenius in the ring with Anthony Joshua and make a mint. Right? Joshua doesn't have the recent track record of a Joe Parker where you say, okay, he's fighting Zhili Zhang, he's fighting Deontay Wilder, right? he's even fighting Joe Joyce. Right? He, he doesn't have that type of track record. While Joshua has looked magnificent, and I concede that, we don't know. We simply don't know if he's going to look magnificent against a young guy in his 20s who is aggressive, who's coming off his career-defining fight. Right? This line's ridiculous. So, we're going to bet this incrementally. I'm going to take whatever is overly mispriced. 
I plan to be on both sides of the play. I myself believe Joshua wins this fight. But I'm grabbing right now because it's being offered right now. Daniel Dubois at a plus 375. Folks, that's a mispricing. Understand what that allows you to do, too. Let's say I plan on betting uh, $3 on Joshua. Right? Just understand, I can insure the play by putting some money at great odds on Daniel Dubois here. Right? You want to be on both sides of the play. You want to get leverage from the casino. You're getting 3.75 in leverage here by taking Daniel Dubois at a plus 375. Right? That's the play I like at this moment. I believe Dubois is a live underdog. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Just understand there are two Daniel Dubois. Right? There's the guy who fought Joe Joyce. There's the guy who fought Usyk. There's the guy who's getting beaten up by Kevin Lorena. Sure, that Daniel Dubois exists. But how do you reconcile that Daniel Dubois with the guy who ends up knocking out Lorena early in that fight? <laughs> right? You know, he hits the canvas himself. He stays with it. Knocks out Lorena early has his fight against Philippe Ergovic stopped on cuts right in a fight where he gets hit with several power shots never slows down never stops throwing punches is never discouraged right if the latter Dubois shows up AJ's in trouble understand Many of us have already plotted out the future of the heavyweight division. Right? We've looked at, you know, Tyson Fury and Usyk, and I know there's the side of the ledger that says if Fury wins, he's then going to fight Anthony Joshua. Uh, you know how they do it. Um, it'll be at least a two-fight series. That's going to tie up the heavyweight division for some time. And, you know, we'll find out if Joshua can return to glory or if Tyson Fury is going to make that first fight against Usyk look like a blip. You also have the Usyk side of the equation where we understand. Olympic gold medalist, undisputed at cruiser. Now undisputed, well, was undisputed at heavy. Uh, is a better athlete than many at heavy. Uh, might be able to get a few more big paydays, right? We have the Martin Bacoli script. Destroy Jared Anderson. According to reports, destroyed Usyk in sparring, right? Has a lot of people wanting to fight him. Is biding his time. One wonders, could either AJ or Dubois beat him? Let's enter another scenario. Heavyweight division has gotten a little bit old, right? There are guys in their 40s who are still competing, who are still very much in the hunt. Gili Zhang comes to mind, right? A Deontay Wilder, he's in his late 30s. A Joshua is well into his 30s. Andy Ruiz looked a little bit sluggish against Gerald Miller, right? Both of those guys are in their 30s, Right? Is there a possibility that we've overlooked the fact that there is a group in their 20s? Right, Their top prospect right now, well, the best positioned guy, is Daniel Dubois. Is there the possibility that this is the beginning of a new generation in the heavyweight division? Right, Let's say Dubois takes out Anthony Joshua. Let's say Dubois is chomping at the opportunity to have a rematch with Usyk. Let's say he's chomping at the opportunity to have a fight with Tyson Fury. Right? A guy who is part of the Frank Warren world that Dubois is part of. That fight should be easy to make. 
Let's say we've ignored the fact that some of these old guys might be slipping. Right? You look at Tyson Fury, let's face it, his performance against Francis Ngannou was uninspired. Let's face it, he seemed to run out of gas when he gets dropped by Usyk. That's in a fight that he's winning in my opinion at least, at the time he gets dropped. Right? Folks, Father Time waits for no one. What's the truth? We're going to find out. Right? There's an opportunity here right now at heavyweight. Is Daniel Dubois too young, too fast, too determined? for some of these older guys. You show me a fighter who has made mistakes, who has given away some fights. I mean, I honestly don't know what Dubois' strategy was against Joe Joyce. Right? You know, you look at the Derek Chisora fight and you see Chisora going over by the ropes. He's all set up to throw some hard counters. Joe Joyce follows him like a puppy. You see Zhili Zhang knocking down Joyce's jab, riddling him with, you know, his own uh, shots, uh, hiding his right hand. What was Dubois' strategy against Joe Joyce? Get hit with a jab? Right, well, you show me the fighter who's made mistakes, who's left money on the table, who rededicates himself to the sport who's willing to take tough fights, who gets hit with several straight rights by Philippe Ergovic and hangs in the pocket, is still aggressive, is not gun-shy, has his own punches that he wants to land. And I'll show you a dangerous fighter. These odds are ridiculous. When the casino says, hey, we'll give you a plus 375 on Daniel Dubois, your answer is, yes, I will take it. Your next question is, who's he fighting? I've grabbed some of the Dubois at plus 375. You tell me your thoughts on that in the comment section of this YouTube video. Understand, when you get great odds like this early, that gives you an opportunity to get provocative on things like fight doesn't go the distance prop, right? If you feel it's going to be a shootout, right? Let's face it too. We know that there are few fighters out there who are judges' favorites. Anthony Joshua is the cash cow in the heavyweight division. If he's in the area code of winning a decision on the judges' scorecards, they're going to give it to him. Right? It's going to be very hard to beat Joshua in the United Kingdom where this fight is going to be. Right? Joshua in Wembley... You have to assume if this fight goes the distance, Joshua's going to be the winner. Dubois, who's British himself, needs to understand that. He's fighting a popular fighter. This is like fighting Canelo. Right? You need to enter the fight knowing, I've got to do something. Your best bet is to look at the judges and to think to yourself, I'm going to take this out of the hands of the judges. If a shootout ensues, do you believe Joshua has the defensive skills to regulate the pace of the fight and to win the shootout? I'm not sure. And this is after watching Joshua for years. This plus 375 looks like a gift to me. Plus 375, Dubois simply to win. I'm going to nail down that side of the hedge right here. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Let me point out to I think Joshua wins the fight. But I want to be intelligent in how I play it. If I can take care of the Dubois side and get plus 375 odds, right? Understand, as I like to say here, a plus 150 would only give Joshua, excuse me, would only give Dubois 
a 40% chance of winning. Folks, you're well below that with a plus 375. Right? If I can take care of the Dubois side of the hedge, more bear for me. Right? Then I can take care of the Joshua side of the hedge for a lot less than a minus 500. If there are props on, you know, let's say fight doesn't go the distance. If I believe it's a shootout and Joshua wins by stoppage, Joshua, let's be careful here, he's on a knockout streak. His last fight didn't make it to the third round. Otto Wallen got hit with enough shots where Wallen, who went the distance against Gassiev, who went the distance against Fury, said, that's it for me. I've had enough of this guy. Robert Hellenius looked good the first six rounds against Joshua. He got knocked out in round seven. Nobody has made it to the eighth round against Joshua for a few fights now. Right? If you believe this fight is in line with that, getting a plus 375 will help you, right, be able to afford props like fight doesn't go the distance or Joshua late, right? If you, you know, understand that Joshua is more popular than Daniel Dubois, he has to be to get odds like this in the United Kingdom where this fight's going to happen. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.